everybody, here's some more from the website of Pam A. Andal. And he does astral traveling and he has contact with ETs. And he does astral traveling, meditation. And he received these messages and was asked just to put them out there, and that's what he's doing. So apparently on December 23rd, 2012, the sun will be going into a red giant phase. And uh, the Herculobus is called Red Giant. So the drama can be even more intense as new input has arrived from Ibex. The giant ribbon of magnetics has changed significantly. We thought we might uh, detect small changes occurring gradually throughout the sun's 11 year long activity cycle, but not over just six months, notes David, Dr. David McComas from the Southwest Research Institute, who is also the principal investigator for the IBEX mission. Shows what it was like four years ago and now six months ago. So it's basically saying you haven't received the message until now. We're facing a mega event at the end of this year. The magnetic influence that is coming from the ribbon is already affecting our sun and all the planets in our solar system. The magnetic field of our planet is shifting and the upper atmosphere is getting more electromagnetic. It's happening just in front of our eyes, but people just cannot see it because they simply do not know what the cause of it is. And there's a diagram there. Scientists first found the magnetic north pole in 1831 and it pretty much stayed put until 1904 when it started moving northwest at about 9 miles per year. However, in 1989 it sped up more and in 2009 scientists confirmed that it was moving at 37 miles per year toward Russia. Similar anomalies were detected with the south magnetic pole. So slow pole shift. The movement uh, rate of the magnetic disturbance will surely increase rapidly in the near future as a consequence of the major changes that are taking place inside our sun because of the approaching magnetic energy. You can see there gamma ray emissions, x-ray emissions, the Milky Way in the middle, the sun, and the time span. Also, despite the constant denial by mainstream science, we are living in a binary system as the majority of the other star systems elsewhere in the universe. The sun's companion star is coming from the direction of Pluto, and we cannot see it always because we are living in a binary star system, which means uh, it's observed from the surface of our planet, the Earth, our Sun, and its companion star are in the same line. From Earth it can be spotted only in the times of major planetary wobbles. The proof that Earth is tilting on its axis is sufficient, obviously seen by the Sun rising and setting on different places than before, like we have seen that, the Sun rising and setting in different places. The locations of the constellations have changed premature end of the polar night in Greenland in 2001. The genuine video evidence coming from all around the world of the presence of the second sun in nearby space is overwhelming. The more we move towards the end of 2012, the more we will be able to see this sun's companion star. Logically, this creates another important factor regarding planetary changes observed lately and regarding anomalies of the Earth's magnetic field. 
Back in January 2011, Tampa Airport in Florida was closed for more than a month because the north magnetic pole was 10 degrees off and the pilots were having a difficult time landing the planes properly. They closed down a runway at Tampa the airport to repaint the numeric designations to line up with the new direction. Dead birds started to fall down from the sky for no particular reason. The same was observed with fish and animals. Because of the magnetite in their brains, which is very sensitive to the changes in the magnetic field of the planet. The magnetic influence will grow in time and we will all know where that leads. Our power grids will be taken down. The living environment on the surface of our planet is already changing and soon it will become obvious that something gigantic is on the run. Something that we cannot stop something that none of the extraterrestrial races can stop either, simply because it's too powerful. Going underground is one of the options to consider, and this cosmic event is the only reason why the underworld was built in the first place. It is building for more than 60 years, and it's almost complete. So they've been building the underground bases for 60 years. I don't doubt that. So that means that those who are on the top of the so-called shadow government have had the information decades ago. To the best of my knowledge or his knowledge, the shadow government is building a shield to protect the planet from this powerful energy, putting thousands of giant mirrors in space to reflect sunlight, just to name one hoping that it will make a difference when the sun moves into the red giant phase. When the sun starts its red giant phase on December 23, 2012, as a result of the physical contact with millions of degrees of Celsius hot magnetic gas approaches from the Milky Way galaxy plane or galactic plane, it will start a slow swelling process until March 28, 2013 when it will reach its climax and the outer layer will be released into space. Another alarm for December 23, 2012 um, in the uh, New Zealand night sky. And he shows a crop circle and then he shows what's going on in the sky. That will leave only the core of the star, known in astronomy as a white dwarf. The size of the white dwarf will be the size of our planet, not capable of producing the same light and heat as before, which are necessary uh, for life to continue uh, with the conditions we have today. All this is well documented and presented in his DVDs, Cosmic Co Coincidences and Expectations for 2012 and 2012 Messages from Above. They're available on his website. If you prefer a different approach, that will be the death of the Aztec fifth sun and the birth of the sixth sun. The ancient calendars that we are seeing today are actually counting when the sun is going to reach the next reset point. But there is another angle to view all this. If you observe it from a physical perspective, you see devastating destructions, but if you see with the eyes of your heart, things look different. This event has potential to cause evolution of humankind if we know ourselves worthy. In order to see with the eye of the heart, first we need to understand what we are. We are intelligent life forces in the universe and our pure essence is consciousness. Our consciousness is capable of multi-dimensional presence. It has its own bioenergetic field that people usually know as an auric field. Besides the biological host that we have, 
We also have so many other energetic hosts, bodies or vehicles, if you will. Those energetic carriers can provide our consciousness to be present in different dimensions, and every one of them have a different density and speed of vibration that matches a certain dimension. At the moment, most humans are operating on a so-called double helix functionality, which means we are using only 3% of our DNA genetic, genetic material and all the rest, 97% of the genetic material is inactive or dormant. Mainstream science calls it junk DNA. Suppose it's there for nothing and we have no use of it whatsoever which, as so many other things presented by mainstream science, is completely ignorant that 97% of the genetic material is disconnected at this moment, but still undamaged and can be reactivated. In fact, all the rest of the energetic bodies we have can be accessed and controlled if that genetic material becomes alive, no, becomes active, along with all the energies and capabilities or abilities that go with every one of them. In other words, every one of those bodies has different abilities, different types of interwoven energies, and capable of different performances. As mentioned before, at the moment we function on a double helix functionality, which is only sufficient that you can see and read this text and to experience it to a certain level and let's say relatively low awareness of the astral plane in the form of lucid dreaming short out of body experiences or near-death experiences the most input is taken from the five senses and that's all that most of us can reach and experience that's all that those three percent of active genetic material can provide a low quality of existence because of this limitation human species is an easy target for manipulation by the dark side of the force and its creatures for more detail who are the controllers and how the game will be played by the dark side of the force please see the pdf 2012 equation solved so I'll continue in the next video. Well, this is Am from Canada One. Thanks for watching.